everyone, I'm Laleen Hassan and welcome to the show. This week, Inspire Middle East is examining investment opportunities in the UAE's capital city. And we hear from decision makers at the Abu Dhabi Investment Office. So the message that I can give out is, please continue to give us that feedback, give us the criticisms, the complaints. Later in the program, we'll put the recent acquisition plans of Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund under the microscope. But first, Rebecca McLaughlin Easton has more on ADU, the central government hub supporting private sector investment in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi and looking to strengthen business partnerships with Israel. Take a look. In its October World Economic Outlook report, the IMF projected a 6.6% contraction in growth this year for the UAE, with recovery eyed for 2021. Whilst oil price swings and the coronavirus pandemic have hit hard, Abu Dhabi remains committed to its economic growth and diversification plans. And last month, the agency Fitch reaffirmed the capital's AA rating and, quote, stable outlook, citing, amongst other factors, its reduced exposure to tourism, real estate and retail compared to neighboring emirates. The Abu Dhabi Investment Office says it's committed to the growth and diversification of the capital's economy through the private sector, whilst of course encouraging investments. How? Well, the entity cites the UAE's strategic location between East and West, plus its positioning on global competitiveness and innovation indexes. Fostering innovation saw the creation of Hub 71, an international tech base in the capital, and Adio's investments in fields like agricultural technology, where it has offered cash and non-cash incentives to ag tech companies looking to relocate or expand in Abu Dhabi. Pure Harvest has reaped the benefit of Adio's investment, using climate-controlled, high-tech, hydroponic greenhouses located outside the city to make year-round farming possible in the arid desert. So Adio's financial commitment is helping us significantly. It's allowing us to add additional technologies to our current deployments here in Alain, also to deploy a pretty novel algae reactor technology that will allow us to export algae uh, all over the world from here in the UAE. And last but not least, to, to bring in some key technical hires that we previously were having a contract and now we can bring in-house to accelerate our technology development and roadmap. On a bigger scale and in line with Abu Dhabi's economic vision 2030, for more than 15 years, the capital has invested heavily in sectors spanning manufacturing, logistics, financial services and aerospace. ADIO is also focused on building bilateral ties and opening international offices to support global companies looking to establish and expand their operations in the capital. And first up is Tel Aviv, in the hope of strengthening connections between innovation-focused companies in both Israel and Abu Dhabi. Looking forward to future investment strategies, we sat down with Dr. Tariq bin Hindi, the Director General of the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, to discuss what economic opportunities lie ahead for the capital Abu Dhabi. Emirati, American and London-trained economist Dr. Tariq bin Hindi is working to expand Abu Dhabi's economy with forward thinking. The former Emirates MBD executive is linking diverse value systems across cultures to attract foreign investment. One of his main missions is to invest in SMEs and startups with the aim to create a viable ecosystem for the capital. Dr. Tariq, a warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Ghadan 21 is more than $13 billion accelerator program, looking to fuel innovation and empower SMEs. So what impact have you seen so far, especially during these difficult times? SMEs are a vital component of any economy. Abu Dhabi knows that. We know what sort of value they bring to our economy. And so therefore, Ghadan has had to be both reactive and proactive. Now, we're, no one has a magic ball as to when this pandemic will be over. But what we do have in our control is this adaptability, as well as the commitment to the growth of the SME sector using both the anchor establishments that Abu Dhabi has created through large government-related entities, the sovereign wealth funds, as well as the private sector, and with the support that Ghadan provides these SMEs to help thrive. So we're looking at that balance. 
How can investing in technology have an impact on areas of necessity, such as agriculture, in order to advance these industries? Every company is a technology company or needs to become a technology company. And so our programs are being prepared to help those companies pivot. Because today what we're seeing with companies is that if they don't adapt technology, they're left behind. So we provide those financial incentives, we provide the access, and we provide the growth. We also work with our sister companies across Abu Dhabi to make sure that we source equity, to make sure that we source opportunity, because it's ultimately about opportunity. Also recently we made an announcement about three very interesting companies that we'd invested in, in, in from an ag tech basis that we're supporting. One of them you know, is looking at ag tech in space. It's the first one that's looking at how it is they can develop technologies to help agriculture thrive in space. And this is aligned with the UAE's space uh, initiative. But also more importantly, we believe that if we can grow crops in space, then the desert should become a very easy terrain for us to manage. So this is one of the interesting ones that we've looked at. But it's also aligned with the theme of innovation, driving technology, knowledge transfer, and ultimately taking risks on various aspects to look for solutions that will benefit everyone. What policies has ADIO put in place to attract more foreign direct investment, such as from Israel, where you plan to open an office soon? Our approach to FDI is about long-term partnership. It's not important for us to just attract any company. We want companies that are going to come and be part of the fabric of our growth in Abu Dhabi. They're going to create job opportunities. They're going to drive technological change. They're going to help us with policy. We want this to be a very proactive relationship and we want it to be resilient. So FDI is important to us, but we have financial instruments that we use to help make sure that that FDI, again, is solid and it's long-term. We have a lot of approaches in various jurisdictions to how it is that we would attract that FDI to Abu Dhabi. Our recent announcement with Israel in terms of technological uh, transfer, in terms of the, the growth opportunities that exist there with what they've been able to accomplish, for example, in ag tech, versus what we've been able to accomplish in hospitality. We see that as a two-way exchange. New resolutions to ease restrictions for foreign investors were issued in March of this year. Yet a degree of uncertainty still remains. Can you describe the impact and implementation of these measures so far? This was a federal level adjustment in terms of all of these regulations. But what we've seen at the local level is we've embraced that and now we're expanding on that. We're looking at how it is that we can make it even simpler using that federal level change in policy around these over 100 uh, sectors um, to then drive our respective uh, changes at the local level. And you're going to start to see more and more of this come out soon in terms of regulatory changes. If there is a lack of clarity, please let us know that. We'll make sure that we clarify that. And not only will we clarify that, we'll make sure that we also present the opportunities that exist in each one of those sectors that has recently been announced. So the message that I can give out is, please continue to give us that feedback, give us the criticisms, the complaints. We're trying to address uncertainty through these collaborative efforts that the public sector is having with the private sector. It's very easy, it'll be a one-stop shop. You have a dollar that you want to invest in Abu Dhabi, we will give you the opportunity and make sure that we help support you through the entire process and the long-term partnership that you will create with us Dr. Tarek, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. If you have unlimited funds at your disposal, investing during downturn could offer a tidy return. Rosie Lee Thompson weighs up the risks and rewards of Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund buying sizable stakes in global companies in these uncertain times. This year's Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund, called the Public Investment Fund, which has an estimated value of around $300 billion, took advantage of fluctuating prices in global stock markets. At the start of the pandemic, PIF's governor, Yazir al ramayan outlined the fund's strategy of not wasting a crisis from the opportunities and snapped up sizable stakes in blue-chip stocks in the finance, technology and entertainment arena, including taking position in the cruise operator Carnival. Whilst many of these shares have now changed, Dr. Azil Malik of Oxford University questions whether PIF spending habits are a result of national sovereign interests or the Crown Prince's personal ones. I have a sense that it might, there might be some top-down influence. So, for example, Mohammed bin Salman has an interest in a particular stake, uh, they might, you know, that might affect the investment process. 
like the cruise liner investment, for example. But that investment or many other investments, people doubt that it was the decision of the PIF as such. It might have been influenced by, uh, by, by, by uh, the royals. And that is a sort of concern uh, because you need to be uh, to have an investment committee in management that is truly independent. PIF has ambitions to be, quote, one of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the world. In order to achieve this goal, some experts believe that PIF will make a major readjustment. New York University Abu Dhabi professor and economist Bernardo Bortolotti believes the sovereign wealth fund will not only look to invest globally over the next two decades. More recently, the PIF has announced a significant change and rebalancing of its strategy with an attention to the local economy. A large-scale investment plan uh, has been announced. The plan will be involving several different projects in the local economy, just for, for the idea and the objective to develop the economy to create jobs and opportunity for the Saudi people. Most watch, no doubt, by many waiting to see if the Sovereign Wealth Fund will perform well in such challenging market conditions. Well, that's all for now. Don't forget to catch all of our episodes online at euronews.com. Before I sign off, check out these business savvy and Instagrammers that caught our eye this week. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Colombian entrepreneur Jose says the best investment is the one you make in yourself. And Yemeni businessman and CEO Amar believes success is the direct result of hard work.